Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Rogue Trader Let's Play. Um, unfortunately it is a little bit late. I've been binging a lot of videos, mainly uh, Mitten Squad videos, since the tragedy that took place a month ago. And so I haven't been playing this game <laughs> like I should. But today I wanted to do something a little bit different since I'm a little short on time. So, not too long ago, I watched one of Slander Gaming's videos uh, depicting a guide on how to build uh, Jay Haidari as far as um, how he put it together. Um, actually, a really uh, well put together guide where he went over all of the uh, abilities that Jai Haidari starts with and the abilities that you can put in as soon as you make it to as soon as you start building her up. Um, now, Jai Hidari is very cool, uh, story-wise, and I'm stoked to use her in combat, just because of the fact that I'll, it means I'll have two officers in my party. I got Cassie over here as well. However, I couldn't help but agree with Slandered when he pointed out the fact that you didn't have any um, say whatsoever in Jay's first... I can never decide how to pronounce it. Uh, Jai's first archetype, which of course is Officer. Um, all of that's picked out for you, and he pointed out some abilities that were really good, some of the choices he made that were really good, and some that were just not very well put together. So, thankfully, now, um, obviously there are updates coming for the game, and, well, there might be, I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see how that goes, but he is hoping as I am in the future, that you might be able to have more of a say in the older abilities. That the the earlier abilities that a character gets that you can't change. In the meantime, however, for those who don't mind the idea of, um, you know, playing around with mods, there is a mod for this game called, uh, I think it's called the Toy Box? Let me check here. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's called the Toy Box for Rogue Trader. Uh, this has kind of been a tradition for whoever makes these. Every Owl Cat video game made so far has one of these. Basically gives you a whole host of ideas on uh, what to work with. So, there's a... Uh, and one of those is, of course, to respec all your characters. Now, I try not to use this too often, but at the same time... One of the things that irritates me about this game is the fact that it does cost profit factor in order to uh, respect your characters. And I wouldn't have such an issue with this except for the fact that I went ahead and did some trading earlier before the episode. And I got some really nice items to be sure. I was very excited for that. But unfortunately, some of the profit factor just goes incredibly high as far as, you know what the costs are. Now, I've heard that I think you can um, get Profit Factor by uh, doing planet management, which, you know, is a very cool idea, but I have yet to run into that yet. And unfortunately, right now, my Profit Factor is sitting at 22, which does not sound as high as you might think. So, with that now, I have heard that um, Owlcat's putting in an update that allows all of your characters to get three their first three respects for free of charge, which is certainly a very nice thing. But even then, that only go they only get to go back to the earliest level you had them. So, thankfully, the toy box has a little bit of a method to circumvent this. So I'm going to show this to you guys. So, when you're using the toy box to respec your character, you want to make sure that you have this selected. It says respec from level 0. Because unfortunately, even if you respec your main character, they're only going to go back to level 1. Now, I was a little bit iffy about using this at first because I was worried if you use it on a companion, it would crash the game. Because, you know, no companion's going to start at level 0. What I'm thinking, though... And I'm happy to say that didn't happen, otherwise I wouldn't be making this video. Is that if you use level 0 on your main character, it's going to take you all the way back to the character creation bit. Which, funny enough, if you just use the end game on Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, it allowed you to, like, restart your 
main character, uh, back from character creation, which why this game doesn't let you do that is a little weird, but whatever. Um, not a huge deal. I like my character the way he's going right now. But I thought about uh, Slender's video, and I figured, you know what? Maybe I should just go ahead and remake uh, Jai Hidari in my image so that she can be really, really useful. Um, you know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, some people might consider this cheap, but hey, if um, anybody who's watched that uh, slandered video agrees with him on a lot of what he says, then there's no doubt a lot of people who would want to change, uh, you know, these abilities that you otherwise wouldn't be able to cheat. Abilities you wouldn't be otherwise be able to change with a toy box mod. And I think it's only fair that we get that, because, I mean, for me, when a developer makes these side characters, I totally like the idea of starting these characters off in a direction that gives the player an idea of where that character should go, but at the same time gives them a few options. Um, like they can have the character start off as something for roleplay purposes or whatever. Um, with that in mind, the idea for Jai was to have her be sort of, I'm guessing, a mid-range to dual-wielding combatant. And I just got to thinking, I forgot to pick a, a common talent, but it's not a big deal. Um, but unfortunately, she had a lot of weird abilities put in a way that didn't make her as powerful as it should have been. So I decided, fuck it, I'm gonna do it myself. So, uh, this is the wrong button. Oh, and actually, here, let me show off the inventory a little bit. Um, so I gave her an Enforcer-like Carapace, and she had these two grenades to start with. Crack grenades. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, but I did pop in another, uh, so these Mind Scrambler grenades I actually got from one of my trading deals. And as far as her weapons, um, this weapon here, the Splinter Pistol, is actually really cool. The armor penetration is incredibly good, despite the low damage. Uh, the other pistol she started with was the Shuriken Pistol. And I thought, well, that's pretty good, but I thought we could do better than that. And so I just gave her the Orthlac Pattern Stub Revolver, which I think is the most powerful pistol I have right now. There might be better ones in the future, but for now. Um, also, um, I need to jack up her strength now I think about it, because the Deadshot Stub is really good. So I might look into doing that in the future. Uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and take a look at how I change this character. Now, I'm pretty sh I I don't know if I did this right at all. I'm pretty sure Slander would kick my ass if he saw my build. <laughs> but I kind of decided to go for something that would allow her to be an officer, but also be able to do a little bit more fighting as well. Cassia, I'm kind of treating uh, her officer abilities as more of a backline fighter sort of uh uh kind of a poor man to dira in terms of the attack she has so for jai i thought maybe more of a mid-range uh, pistol wielding specialist that could uh if she was going to give uh abilities to you know extra turns and sets to her character it would be designed in a way to give them more offensive capability so I wanted her to stay as an officer. I didn't want to change that. I'm, I wasn't about to change her first archetype. Um, just because officers are so valuable in the field. So starting things off, of course, every officer gets voice of command, which is really, really nice to have. And then, of course, uh, you get a skill boost. She gets a skill boost level two. So I picked persuasion. Um... I know I've already got some persuasive characters here as well, but um, it never hurts to have some extra ones just in case there's something that even Kasia can't pull off. Hers right now is... Let's see. Where are you at? You're at 75. Um, with the way I've built uh, Jaya, hers is already up at 85 at this point, which will be very helpful. Uh, then, of course, there's the signature ability, Bring It Down, which is nothing short of absolute amazement. And having two party members who can do bring it down um, is incredibly very useful. And then, of course, there's the officer's uh, heroic ability, the finest hour, which is, you know, really useful. I used it once. I didn't use it properly. Um, as for her first talent, I, uh, of course, gave her commanding voice 
which increases the range of our abilities and voice of command as well. Um, always a useful thing to have. This gives you more control over the battlefield. Let's see, one, two, three, four. For level five, I decided to jack up our fellowship because that's one of the abilities every officer should have. It definitely, you know, jacks up all their powers, that's for sure. Uh, and then I decided to go ahead and give her nimble. I've decided I want her to focus on dodging as much as possible. Um, aside from weapon skill, ballistic skill, fellowship, all that, agility was the only other ability that was above uh, 30, started at 40, so I thought, well, we can make that work. Um, seize the initiative is one that I picked out. This is one of the big divergences. Uh, one of the big things Slander talked about, and I was so glad I watched the video because I didn't even know this was a thing, but seize the initiative is an officer ability, uh, that gives the officer an extra turn at the start of combat. Naturally, uh, giving the officer ability to have an extra turn of combat, which in turn lets her give extra turns to her other characters, can absolutely mean the difference between victory and defeat. And as the last few battles I've been in have proved, the enemies are really stepping up their game in terms of damage and such, so I decided to go ahead and give that one. Just so that way, when you're building her, you don't feel linchpinned into going into Master Tactician. Because I wanted to try something different with her. Uh, next one was another characteristic which I picked Fellowship again. For her abilities, I decided to go with Move, Move, Move. Um, I can't remember if this is one the game already picked. But the officer granting an ally additional movement points equal to Fellowship. I didn't really even think about how useful that was until I remembered that I've got two meleeers in my party. And giving them a Fellowship bonus boost like this is nothing short of phenomenal, of course. And if they're under the effect of voice of command, uh, they ignore attacks of opportunity until the end of the officer's turn, which, depending on how, you know, narrow, narrowly set the enemies are, can really, really help out a lot. Also, I decided to go ahead and do characteristic training ability in the commandant's ability, agility in the commandant section, because, again, I wanted to try and focus that. I've been trying my damnedest to have... Each and every one of my characters have some sort of a defensive boost just to help uh, add in that extra self-preservation. Because no matter, you know, what, no matter what precautions you take, they're always at risk of getting downed by an enemy easily. And so, you know, having characters that can either dodge or get some extra hit points is always a nice thing to have. Um, I'm sure anybody would tell me that toughness would be a better choice, and I certainly don't disagree with that. But, I mean, 50 hit points already. She's pretty tough to begin with. Uh, next, I decided to go ahead and... Uh, as it turns out, there are some talents, archetype talents, that actually synchronize with uh, certain abilities that you pick. And so I've been keeping a closer eye out for those. So the one that I picked here was Watch Yourself. Targets of Move, Move, Move gain a 10% bonus to dodge and a 10% bonus to cover efficiency until the start of the officer's next turn. I think this is incredibly useful uh, if you use it on the right targets, like um, Argenta, for example, who is, you know, she's gotten a lot of dodge out of me. Uh, right now it is. She actually has it set at 105%, which is, you know, really, really good to have. In fact, after rebuilding Jai the way I have, hers is already at 101, which is certainly nice to have. Um... So I think that'll be something very useful as long as you know how to use it. Uh, next, I picked out Persuasion. Again, it's, you know, useful. Um, let's see. Next, uh, Finest Hour Upgrade 1. I decided to go ahead and go with the first upgrade, which gives... Um, let's see. During the extra turn, the target deals extra plus 3 damage. I can't remember what bonus that goes off of. But they also gain voice of command automatically, which is really, really nice. Sure. Uh, I decided to pick coercion for this one. I'd heard from Slander that coercion is a more useful ability to have in a heretical playthrough. So I decided to take that advice and go with that one. Next up, ballistic skill. Right now she's got a plus six bonus to it and it's sitting at 60. Uh, pick this one out because that's 
you know. Officers are kind of your big support characters. And it wouldn't surprise anyone if they weren't really known for fighting. But as Jai is not sort of magical character like Cassia is, I figured as long as she's going to be, you know, pause and turns around, she would be nice to give her something to defend herself. And I don't know about you, but if you have a character with <laughs> that specializes in dual pistols, you want to use them, those pistols somehow. So that would be kind of fun. And speaking of which, I also gave her leaders assault. When the elderly officer makes an attack, they gain plus five fellowship until the end of combat. Now, when you consider how an officer's abilities scale off a of fellowship, it's a risky endeavor to give uh, her this one, especially considering, you know, pistols are more of a mid range ability. But the way I see it, as long as I play it, say, uh, play the battles right and make sure that she's protected properly. Um, I mean, getting a plus five to fellowship every time you land an attack is nothing sort of huge. And I'm kind of wondering if she were to make a burst attack, if she would get plus five to fellowship for every hit she lands. I don't think that's going to be the case. That sounds too powerful. But in the meantime, I also decided to take another sort of ballistic skill. I thought about what Slander said about um, only beefing up. Uh, characteristics that are specific to your class only when you actually get a characteristic boost. I and saving these uh, common talent ones for class uh, characteristics that you wouldn't normally get. I kind of agree and disagree at the same time. Um, I mean, one thing's for sure: you can only beef up your primary attributes through leveling up so many times. So I do get why you wouldn't want to, you know, jack those abilities up too quickly. I'm just the kind of guy who, if I've got a, like, if I'm an officer who uses fellowship, I like the idea of cranking up that fellowship as quickly as possible to make as much use out of their abilities as possible. I can see why you wouldn't want to do that, but, you know. Uh, and then for her next ability, I went ahead and took Take Aim. Target's next attack will ignore cover and have double the effective distance. If the target is under the effects of voice of command, the attack will ignore enemy dodge. Additionally, the damage from this attack can't be reduced below 48% for any reason. Sounds like a really niche ability, huh? Well, if you've been keeping an eye on my Let's Play, you'll know that this guy is my sniper. I'm going to tell you right now. You get this ability on a sniper that can do high damage to begin with, you will go places. And considering that I've seen some enemies every now and then get far away enough that even my sniper can't reach them, this can be a really, really nice ability to have. And I mean, the fact that you can ignore cover is something that can kind of help take the heat off of this guy with his uh, take aim ability. Not, not have to focus on that so much. And being able to ignore enemy dodge is also very nice. I mean, it's incredibly rare for this guy to go below 95%, but it's happened every now and then. And, you know, I'm always nerve-wracked about how some high dodge characters can, you know. In any case, the other characteristic training, of course, I got was also ballistic skill as well. It sounds like a bit of a waste, but it got her up to 60, which is always a nice thing to have. Uh, for the next level, we got Steady. Take Aim also increases the damage of the next range attack by 2% for each cell between the attacker and the target. Now, I'm already doubling the effective distance of this, and it ignores cover, and it reduces dodge. Getting an extra 2% of damage for every cell by itself is pretty good. You give it to a Sniper... I mean, the damage I can crank out is just going to skyrocket. So I'm pretty excited to give that one a try. So that'll be a lot of fun. And then I picked Coercion again. Uh, next up was Agility. Again, to make sure her dodge was kept up as high as possible. Um, and then next up, I also picked up It Will Not Die. Just so that she could get some extra wounds. Because if there's one character that you do not want falling over in battle it's your officer because an officer 
bites it, then that's, I mean, all the extra turns you could have just go with them. Losing an officer, even one officer, can really devastate your party. And finally, for our finest hour, we picked upgrade four. Uh, the upgrade they originally picked for the character wasn't very good. It was more of a defensive one. So I went ahead and picked the fourth one. During the extra turn, any kill made by the target restores one action point and one movement point up to six times. Which, you know, when you combine that with someone like um, uh, Argenta's, which lets her attack without losing action points, or this guy whose attacks like pretty much ignore action points as well. You know, being able to combine that with their um, heroics is just absolutely amazing, and I think that will be very useful. And it also lets a... Uh, so, um, Finest Hour already lets you direct uh, your turn to another person, which, you know, I didn't use properly when I last did it. But this one lets you uh, retain that remaining action points and movement points to another turn, which is a nice thing to have. So, with the character built up the way she was, I decided, because I had Season the Initiative taken, to go ahead and give Master Tactician a swing, because I've already got um, Grand Strategist for her, and I wanted to try and, you know, keep from overlapping archetypes as much as possible just to keep the uh, party variety and such up um master t uh, yeah master acquisitions all they all start with press the advantage which let's see here uh, it basically lets the Master Tactician empower their next attack deal 4% additional damage for every stack of tactical advantage the Master Tactician has but they lose half those stacks rounded up so, I figure if we're already going with a class that I want to try and give a bit of an offensive edge, that's a good one to have. And then they also get Tactical Advantage, which is kind of their signature ability. Uh, they gain one stack of Tactical Advantage per every five momentum gained by either the Master Tactician or their allies. They begin combat with an amount of Tactical Advantage stacks equal to their Fellowship bonus. Again, very important to have that as high. For my first availability, I went ahead and uh, picked out Inspire. It was really tough picking out some. I wanted something that would be useful offensive-wise, but I know uh, there were some that could boost uh, allies' resolve, which means more resolve means more momentum, which means more heroic, which, which is always nice to have. Uh, for this one, the target gains a bonus to damage. Uh, right from the get-go, and an additional bonus to damage for every 10 stacks of tactical advantage the Master Tactician has. However, the Master Tactician loses half of those stacks of tactical advantage from it. This affects stacks and lasts until the end of combat, which is, you know, for damage dealers is really good. If the target uses a heroic act before the beginning of the Master Tactician's next turn, they regain plus 25 momentum. Your momentum goes down quite a bit after you use a heroic, so having this Thing available is a really nice uh, boon to have for sure. Uh, that's as far as I've gotten. I literally just got started with this character, but I just thought to myself, I mean, look, you can call it cheating, you can call me lazy, or whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. You know, getting a character that uh, you have to kind of fight with in order to make them work properly is one thing. I can kind of see the, uh, you know, I, I, some people can kind of see it as an interesting puzzle to make the character work the way they want to, even with, you know, rough builds from the start. And, and I can kind of see the appeal behind it. But at the end of the day, after listening to what Slandered was talking about with Jai Heydari, I mean, I knew deep down it would be a pain in the ass to get her to work. Uh, the way I wanted to. And to be fair, though, I probably wouldn't have let it bother me too much knowing that, you know, sometimes having two grand strategists is not a bad thing at all. And uh, that can certainly be useful for sure. Um, but at the end of the day, I'd already made Dira uh, 
a master tactician, so I really wanted to go in another direction with Jai. And I just thought to myself, you know, they Owlcat can justify it however they want. I'm not mad at them for building Jai the way they did. They have every right to build the character the way they did. And I've got nothing against how they the uh, idea they had. If anything, while I do want um, the ability to customize my characters the way I do, I would like the idea of, you know, Owlcat in their future games giving you the option of, like, giving a couple of uh, sort of pre-built uh, setups for your companions in case you saw them go some way, way and you're like, oh, I like uh, choosing that idea, going with that. But I just thought to myself, it's one thing to see a difficult character as an interesting puzzle to put together, and it's quite another to see them with ability so borked up, you're wondering that if you if you can even use them at all. And considering I still have uh, party members coming up that will likely be very powerful in their own right, Ulfar in particular, I just thought to myself, I don't care what anybody says, I'm going to pull out the toy box and we're going to have some fun. Because in that way, if I do it that way, I'll have more fun with the character in general. And I really, really, really want to use Ty. I mean, I already told you I'm going to romance this woman uh, without a doubt in my mind. But I want to be able to use her as well. Because characters characters that you have romantic interest in, you know, the romance itself can be pretty fun. But if you, you know... Expand the interest at wanting them to be in your party all the time. It just it just kind of makes the whole thing a lot sweeter. That's eh, it's a weird thing coming from me. <laughs> but anyway, that's kind of my idea for Jai Heydari. Um, and that's going to be it for this little interlude. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and take care of everything else that there is to do on football. And in the episode after that, we're going to start looking at reclaiming the three planets that I need to to get my empire restarted. And from there on, we'll just see how things go. So until then, uh, feel free to leave your ideas on how you would rebuild characters that, you know, kind of get the short end of the stick in terms of creativity. And also, I will be able, I will be sure to leave a link to the Toy Box mod uh, on Nexus so that uh, anybody who wants to use a toy box themselves can use it. Um, and also, while you're at the Nexus uh, page for this game, make sure to check out some of their uh, portraits. There are tons and tons of portrait mods right now. And I am uh, got a hold of a couple myself that I find I th thought were really, really cool. I'm not using any of them right now. Uh, my character's portrait is one of the starting ones, but uh, yeah might be a fun way to support the mod authors and you know see what you can do but in the meantime thank you guys again so much for checking out this video and i hope to see you in the next one until then take care of yourselves and farewell <laughs>